<laughs> Yay! Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I'm. S- we're so sorry about that. But um. Hey, y'all. Um. You know, it wouldn't be episode number ten if we didn't have technical difficulties to bring us back to episode one we thought we took care of it all but i guess not sorry y'all um, something got stuck we don't we don't know what happened we just wanted to have a cameo for cindy yeah we wanted to welcome her on yeah <coughs> everyone round of applause for cindy yeah uh, <laughs> okay so we'll try this again so we are root juice and coffee <laughs> and i'm one of your hosts kirsten and i talk about house plants and i'm Haley, and i talk about outdoor gardening so we are so happy you guys joined us. So sorry about that. We missed you last week as well mm-hmm. here in Michigan, as well as so many places in the U.S. Just got dumped on with snow mm-hmm. and with so many of our um, employees driving so far, we decided to have a snow day, you know, yeah. to keep everyone safe. The roads were terrible. Um, and so, yeah, we were so sad we missed out on last week, but we're back. We're here now, so yeah, we're glad to be here. Um, I hope you guys didn't wait too long to figure out that we weren't going to be on last week. Um, but yeah, we're glad to talk to you guys today. And today for our coffee, uh, just ran to a local coffee shop here downtown, Exquisite Corpse. We've talked about them before. Um, and yeah, great small business. But today, <laughs> I I asked the owner on their seasonal menu what he would recommend, and so we're doing the dark chocolate strawberry latte. Forgot to get the extra shots. So it's pretty chocolatey. Yeah, you can see by my cup, it's a lot uh, richer <laughs> than I was like expecting. Gonna, gonna cheers! Then. I'm like, cheers, yeah, coffee, cheers. anyone? Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, it is pretty good. It just tastes like a chocolate strawberry. I don't know. It is really good. So I don't know if you guys saw my messages throughout the chat as they were coming through, um, but I had asked, "What is everyone starting right now?" Just as kind of a little breaker, just. So I just got back from a trip. I was in Montana. Any Montanians? Anyone from Montana on here listening with us? I don't know. If it, we're Michiganders. I don't know if it works elsewhere. Um, but yeah, know. so I was in Montana for a week. Um, and I went skiing and snowboarding with my family. And it was a blast, but oh, I'm so happy to be home. I miss yeah. my seedlings so bad. I missed you. Wow, she and first Kirsten. said she misses seedlings. Not and Kirsten, I miss Kirsten. <laughs> yeah, to mute the mic again. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no. no, I did. I started, so before I left, I had started celery and Brussels sprouts. And so my cousin was watching the house and had to send me um, updates on my seedlings Aww. all week. <laughs> little new sprout I know. <laughs> yeah. they're doing so great <laughs> i see a couple people are starting um onions too and yeah and yeah we're kind of just getting to the cusp of when we can start i started habanadas yesterday Ooh, that sounds awesome i'm starting those tonight i did a tray of hot peppers yesterday because of course finally when i got home i had to start all the seeds so i got hot peppers in I got a tray of two trays of cherry tomatoes in. I love cherry tomatoes. Okay, can you guys tell me what your favorite cherry tomato is? I love chocolate cherry tomatoes, which is kind of fitting for our coffee today. Um, And I started way too many. I mean, I do a seed sale too, or a seedling sale as well, so like it'll be fine, but I started so many. So I hear is food that you can bring into work. (laughs) Just kidding. Um, I really <laughs> appreciate David Styles' roots, mutes, and coffee. Thank you. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, sun gold. Yeah, sun golds are fantastic. Yep. So good. Started sweet peppers, Ariel. Awesome. I started Brussels sprouts and broccoli. Uh, creatively, Candace, where are you that you are starting leafy greens? Are you just having them for inside or i can't start those yet I saw a soon people but saying not yet and such too they're just such quick mm-hmm. rowers um 30 jugs of winter sown flowers awesome yeah i know luke did a video on winter sowing last two weeks ago now two weeks ago so i've seen so many people dabble in winter sowing mm-hmm. do you know what that is 
Um, I only know a little bit about. That's okay. Yeah. So it basically, so the method that is super common is the milk jug method. Yeah, that's like the one I've seen out in the okay. plant groups. Yeah, and so you can sow your seeds outside, and it creates like this mini greenhouse. And um, I know a lot of people are trying it for the first time this year, so that's awesome. That's I think that'd be fun. I think that's something I could handle because I it, I feel like it does so much of the work with the humidity built up in there to get it going. Yeah. But then when you get it out, are you just cutting the jug or something? Okay, so you cut your jug in half first. Oh, okay. So that way yeah, you're that not working <laughs> through it. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. So it's cut in half so you can lay your soil in and your seeds. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you just tape your the rest of your jug down. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you do that? I didn't this year. I yeah. thought about it, but we don't really drink milk, and I didn't have any containers. Yeah. And yes, distilled water. I could have done totes and so many other creative options. It just, I don't know. I thought about it with my lavender, like the really hard things mm -hmm. to germinate mm -hmm. that need the, you know, the stratification in the first place. And I probably should have, and I didn't. I did sow some lavender yesterday, though. Oh, no. Nice. That was in my freezer for a month. I want to grow some lavender. That's the one I tried before. And it didn't work out. I didn't know about gardening that much before starting here, besides houseplants. But uh, starting from seed was a whole other thing. And I just kind of dumped into a container and let it sit in a window. <laughs> and I was like, bye. So, <laughs> so it didn't work out, essentially. Solid. I had some sprouts that didn't last. Solid effort. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, winter sowing about 15 years ago. I can confirm it works. Awesome. Yeah, no, I know it works. I know uh, I watch a ton of people who do it. I just haven't quite done it myself yet. Mm -hmm. uh, under the grill light. Ooh, some of our seeds under the grill light from Glenn. Peppers, tomatoes, lettuce, herbs for winter consumption. Ooh. Awesome. Love that. That's yeah. a good selection. Um, Melanie, my first time starting seed indoors so far, so good. Yeah, good. I feel like a lot of people are starting to, this is their first year gardening too. And yeah. so I do want to bring up again too, when you guys have questions, like especially if you're a new gardener or anything, um, put them in all caps in the chat so we can find them easier too. And um, you know, put in your house plant questions as well. I'll try to look for those. Let's see, Christine asked, how do you guys store your, store your seeds? I personally mm -hmm. sow, my goodness, <laughs> I personally store them in those clear photo boxes, which I currently have a love-hate relationship with. They're kind of okay. like all the rage for storing your seeds, and I get it, because they come with these individual like four by six plastic containers, and there's mm -hmm. I think 12 or 16 in each big box. So it's great to like, you can sort it whichever way you want, and I, it's not working. I don't love it, because uh. I have them all sorted by you know, what they are first. Now I think I'm going to dump it all out and try again. I want to sort them by when I can start them. Because what I'm already finding yeah. out is I'm afraid to miss things. Mm -hmm. You know? So I got to get that planner going. and I have <laughs> a planner graveyard. I, <laughs> I want to be a planner person. I do so bad. Are you guys good planner people? I have like a flip down calendar that I'm trying to use too. But I think it would just be really easy if I had two or three, because I yeah. have a lot of seeds. <laughs> two yeah, or three, I know. <laughs> two or three containers for like 12 weeks before your last frost date. And then my next whatever for my eight to 10 weeks before your last frost date. I feel like I won't I won't lose track of things and then miss out on growing it that year that way. I actually love that idea, like yeah. staying very organized, because I am all about lists and like I would probably have a list going, but at the same time, like, that's even already so much simpler. Just pick it up and get going. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, how much water do you put in the bottom of your tray for watering them from the bottom? So, Paul, what I look at personally, and this may not be right, it's just how I've always done it, is I just make sure there's a level one. Make sure your trays are level. You will see the difference, even if they're off just a little bit, you'll see the difference in the water uptake in you know, the cells on this side of your tray versus the one's kitty corner. Um, I came home to one of my trays a little unlevel. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, those look dry. <laughs> so make sure it's level. But I put probably 
maybe a half an inch of water. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That was just for them. <laughs> a half an inch. They're already making fun of us for the muting problem, I know. okay? <laughs> the half an inch of water, maybe. Maybe a little less than that. And I don't do it super frequently. Um, I do it probably twice a week, maybe three times if my, my house is very dry. So sometimes it loses its humidity quick. Um, so I have mm-hmm. to do it that third time, but not super frequently. Let's see. This is more <laughs> off topic. But Randy says they found a Masera at Insani at Lowe's for fourteen dollars, and I'm like, that's a good deal. The wide form one, I can't find it. I've never seen one in person. I've got narrow form, but what is it? Just a wider leaf? Yeah, it just looks cool to me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, Lowe's and places have recently been getting a lot of good house plants uh, from Costa Farms, so that. If you guys want to start house plants, now is kind of a good time because they're just trying to get so much of this new stuff in. They're trying yeah. to dabble more rare stuff. Nicole but, is asking if you can use egg cartons to start seeds. Ooh, I've seen that. Absolutely. I do. I know um, people have done it in the, what is it? Pressed. It's like the pressed paper. It's like the pressed paper or egg <laughs> cartons, not the styrofoam type cartons. Oh, are you talking about kind of the like cardboardy feel? Yeah. Yeah, the styrofoam ones I feel like, I don't One, know. you would for sure have to transplant out of that, but the pressed paper is what I'm going to call them, might be something you can yeah, leave yeah. in and just break the bottom open when you transplant. But yeah, absolutely. Um, they have those pressed paper like flats for eggs that you can get at Tractor Supply, I know, um, which is a farm shop by us. And you can get them super inexpensive and in like mega bulk. They're always trying to get oh. rid of them. I don't know why they keep supplying them, but... Mega yes. bulk. Yeah, <laughs> mega bulk. Uh, I have so many in my house. Oh. Uh, David, hi from Maine. Oh. Uh, Creatively Candice. I mean, just your name sounds like you're a huge planner person. I, <laughs> yes. I, I, I want to be. I'm just I not. I see. I'm a huge planner person. I plan everything, and I love that. I am ADD, as I saw someone else saying too up there. But <clears throat> it does help to like have a list and have a journal, and can be a little bit more tough to keep up with. But it will keep you in track if you're feeling like you're forgetting something. Just have something to look at. It yeah, make difference. Yeah. Okay. So food forest next door. Hello. I don't think I've seen you on yet. So hi. If not. Um, they said uh, that they don't advise starting your seeds if it's your first year gardening. And I don't necessarily disagree with them. Um, starting mm-hmm. seeds is a huge undertaking. Yeah. You have to um, make a big commitment to starting seeds. And that could be a little much for a first-time gardener. And so if you are a first-time gardener, learn as much as you can, you know, as you're going th- through this. And um, as you learn as much as you can as you're going through this, and don't be discouraged if you know it's not right for you to start seeds, don't start them yet. Um, you can start them next year, or even in the fall is a good time. You know, you want to support local and find growers or small farmers in your area. Like, you know, for myself, I do a plant sale, so you can support people like us and get your starts there so you can get your hands dirty. <laughs> without be the one to actually germinate the seed yeah you know just to get your feet wet because the last thing i want is for someone to get discouraged when it comes to gardening because there's so much room for learning and growth and it is such mm-hmm. uh, a rewarding ho- i don't i don't want to call it a hobby it's such a rewarding practice is mm-hmm. to garden and i you know i want everyone to be able to do it and to learn and i would hate for someone to get discouraged or start a variety you know don't overwhelm yourself it might be good to do you know you could do some seeds and kind of look up what might be more realistic for you but then get the starts and stuff too just so you can yes have something but also experiment yeah but i think the whole thing with houseplants and outdoor gardening and such it's just like there's gonna be plants that die or don't make it or whatever don't germinate and i don't know it's just about having like fun with it and like 
seeing something grow that you're working on is really rewarding. Yeah. And And to always learn from everything. Yeah, and it's such a learning thing. And, I mean, I don't know. If I have a plant that starts dying, like, yeah, I don't want to look at it for a because it makes me feel bad. But it is a good learning experience. Can't look at you. Just I know. I, like I'll go for my favorite to like. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't put like it that plant anyway. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Don't blame it on the plant. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. So now that we're we're getting seeds started, or you know, I know weeks ago we talked about garden planning, uh, just to get us through this winter. Um, but I, it's something I want us to kind of relook at again. When it comes to your garden, um, do you guys practice any type of permaculture methods? And, uh, and if you do, why? That's going to be my next question. For me personally, I do... <laughs> you reading that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, for me personally... I um, I do permaculture, one, for the beauty of it. I am not like a straight line kind of person. Um, I don't, you know, I like when things are intertwined and intermixed. And, and not only is it aesthetically pleasing, but it's also really beneficial to your plants to be partnered with different crops. Um, and there are a ton of benefits to growing, to pest prevention, um, instead of um, waiting until the pests come and then treating them then. So there are a lot of reasons to use uh, permaculture. Milkweed for the monarchs, yeah, absolutely. So something I wanted to talk about today is that, um, you know, we do pest prevent, um, pest management a lot. That's what I was looking for. We do pest management a lot. You know, as gardeners, we kind of put it all on the ground. And then you can look at all of those Facebook groups that you're in. And it's like, oh, what is this bug? Yeah. You know, what is this on my plant? What is happening? Where did my plant go? It was here this morning and now it's gone. Um, and a lot of the pest and even disease can happen due to the way we plant or arrange our plants. You know, mm-hmm. a huge misconception from farmers and uh, translating it down to the backyard gardener is the rows that we, you know, that you plant things in oh, uniform mm-hmm. rows. You know, we we live in a field of corn, right? Yeah. It's corn everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Everything in is Ohio. Just, it's record, all mon. But, yeah. Right. <laughs> <Okay>. We're, <laughs> we're, you know, it's all monoculture and it's all imperfect rows. Do you guys know any... What kind of, what can happen if we plant like that? What are some big things? Do you have any idea what that can do? What it can do when we plant in rows? When, one, when they're like perfect rows and it's all the same thing. So like yeah. all your I, tomatoes are in a row. And all depleting the same nutrients in each of the soil. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so your tomatoes, say you plant all your tomatoes one spot all the time, all together. That plant is always taking up the same thing and always giving back the same thing. Yeah. Oh, so you're also overloading your soil with the same stuff coming back out. Definitely. That could be a possibility, too. Yeah, let's see if I got anyone in here giving me anything back. Do you guys know of anything? Can you think of anything in regards to pests? They jump from one to another easily. It's They're like quite... a buffet. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so that's another thing of why we don't. Oh, yeah. Someone just said it too. Um, oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yep. Disease can spread really quickly in monoculture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, disease and pests. It's They will jump from one to the other. They'll be on one plant and lay all their babies and their babies will hop to the next one. And um my thing though too if i didn't mean to cut you off no go ahead (laughs) okay but then if you're doing the permaculture thing and there's different plants is the idea that like certain plants attract different pests so that would help with okay because health plants are kind of the same oh really that well like Calatheas and palms get like they need more humidity they get spider mites easier it's like i imagine if i had them all together it would just be like spider mite fest (laughs) so i don't put them by each other yeah that's gonna that's a perfect thing so when you have multiple do you put them in like different rooms your house 
Or like uh, at least different areas in that room. Uh, different plants in between. Sure, yeah. <laughs> They're all crowded together, so. Oh, that's yeah. fair. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it's it it's going to translate the same way. Yeah, interesting. So, you know, um, a huge thing, cabbage lopers are a huge pest in the garden. And when you put all of your brassicas in one line, guess who's going to be eating them? <laughs> You know, so <laughs> what I like to do is I space them out all over my garden. Um, this year, I even planted some zucchini in one of my flower beds, and it did awesome. Oh. And the squash that were in my garden beds got attacked by squash bugs, but the other ones didn't. Interesting. You know, so spacing mm-hmm. things out. And then you talked about plants that can kind of um, trap pests or attract pests. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, yeah, they're trap plants. So nasturtium is a good one. That will attract pests. Yeah. <laughs> she calls them Nister Cheese. I think it's so cute. Um, uh, are marigolds, like, isn't there something about them preventing pests? Yeah. Mar- mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and marigolds actually help scent lines too. Um, and basils and stuff like that when you're talking about larger pests. Deer? Like animals. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like large pests. Yeah. So you can use... Um, the scent of plants to help deter pests and intermix those with your the crops that you're hoping to harvest from in a protection way Mm -hmm. you know so planning ahead um is uh, yeah great alliums and daffodils are great to repel Mm -hmm. deer yeah i'm i'm doing a big i've got a list of all of these different plants to repel deer because the farm that my brother and I do is out at my grandparents, and they ate so much last year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so much. So we're, we're not only fencing things in this year. It was our first year going kind of large scale, but um, we're planting all these things that are deer resistant. You know, awesome. along the fence lines, too. Someone put in, too, rabbits dislike the smell of marigolds. Yeah. And so now I'm just like, we're going to see a big spike in a marigold seed sale. <laughs> <laughs> but really, though, I feel like... That would yeah. be a really good thing to like have around your garden now. It's it's pretty and then yeah, you get to keep your other plants. Exactly. A cool thing about marigolds is that they are super quick to germinate and grow. Uh, so what I personally do is I start um, by the end of the season I like to have a marigold hedge by my tomatoes at the base of them. Hmm. And so I plant one like every four, maybe five feet, um, in my like fifty feet rows. And as soon as one, a head dies, I deadhead it and just sprinkle it in the row. And every time I get a deadhead, I do it. And by the end of the season, I have a whole hedge. Did you say deadhead it? What? Yeah. Do you not know what deadheading <laughs> no. is? Oh. I'm, I guess you probably don't have many flowers. Like, it's a common no. term for flowers. Oh, yeah. I always cut my flowers to press them. So then I just stick them in the ground after and I don't care. But then when they rebloom, it's a happy surprise. <laughs> So, sorry. So, like no. blasphemous. Yeah. <laughs> Deadheading is cutting off the dead flower heads mm. um, to promote more growth. Okay. So, I do it with my dying leaves and house plants so yeah. that they focus the energy on your leaves. Exactly. Okay. It's it all just, translates over eventually. I just have to ask the question. It's called first. deadheading. Yeah. Oh. It's kind of a funny term. Yeah. Yeah. That was um, cool. Okay, yep, it's true. Ashley, you can use different types of urine to deter pests as well. I think it's interesting that you can go somewhere and buy coyote urine. Oh, I'd rather, let's just plant some marigolds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> really yeah. Funny. It's probably just lemon. It says you mainly harvested. I don't even want it. I don't want to know. Anywho. Um, can you grow nasturtiums in hanging baskets? Asked Sam. Uh, absolutely. I see no issue in that. Why do you want to grow them in a hanging basket? Out of curiosity, because I think they'd be really pretty. Yeah. They like, they kind of like, uh, fall, not fall over, but they like vine over. It's not necessarily a vine, but it, it looks like. Yeah. It, it kind of drapes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Drapes. That's I probably. I would be pretty. That's a good one. Let's see. Yeah, I like the idea of companion planting, um, so I try to practice it. Yeah, I absolutely. The hard thing is sometimes is um, looking up when you go and Google companion planting, it can get really overwhelming, though. I bet you I know. Feel like there's a bunch of different theories too, like opinions. And- yeah, and everything contradicts. So you can go on and see that you know 
beans are terrible to plant with corn. And then you go on and you find the three sisters and you're like, I don't know, like which one? So it's really <laughs> contradicting. Honestly, my favorite thing is to experience it. Try it. If you, if you want to try something together, go for it. If it doesn't work that season, you know for the next season. And it could be a step into, into your research as to why that didn't work. Um, because you may find something that works just fine for you and where you grow. True. Yeah. And also, like, just looking at some of the comments, too, like, I think it kind of depends on your area maybe a little bit as well as to, like, kind of, like, what kind of pests you might get more of. Is that true? In your area? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, your area definitely depends on what pests you have around. Have you guys heard of the cicadas who are coming back? Oh. I actually don't hate cicadas, but if they're coming back. I would hate a swarm of cicadas. A swarm of them. Anyone bothering That's a no for me. Yeah. Um, Um, Randy, I see um, any tips for houseplants that can grow in direct light? Because my south facing window gets a ton of light that my, one of my monsteras went a little chlorotic. Um, a lot. I, I think there's me it's got some bleached a little. Oh, okay. But um, I, a lot of plants actually need that bright light. So you could almost Google it because so many things will come up. Um, a lot of people actually have the opposite problem where they want low light and so they only have so many options. Uh, with the bright light, you could have a lot of options. I would also pick a spot that like um, maybe like when the sun rotates, you know it's going to get a good portion of like indirect light at a point too. Um, but I would look into that a little bit more like a list because there is a lot you could do. Um, monsteras do survive in low light as well. So <clears throat> it probably was a bit much for that one, but yeah, so I don't have an exact recommendation because so many would do well in it. Um, you get, well, I'm going to call it wandering dude because I know the actual name isn't the always plants called loved. Oh, fair. <laughs> yeah. So, fair. but, um, those would do well, because uh, otherwise, without that bright light, too, they get um, leggy. So that'd be a good one, and they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. Really interesting. Creatively Candace, she moved 15 minutes away from her house and got a whole wow. new set of pests. It doesn't, I, yeah, it, that no matter sense. where you're at. Yeah, that makes sense to me, because I'm thinking about, like, my old house. My grandmother had lived a few, like, two streets away from that, and she had totally different kind of pest. She had these huge beetle things I'd never seen anywhere else in my life. And we lived like two streets apart. Wild. From her old house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't go there. Huge yeah. beetles. No. <laughs> Pinter's like, no. Where were you? In Michigan? <laughs> I mean, in Port Huron? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Anywho. <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, wrong with my story is that when you're garden planning this year and even if you started it weeks ago, mine, I draw mine out like probably every week just because one, it brings me joy to plan it out again all over. And I each time think about where my plants are and what I can do to intermix them and figure out, you know, what plants give what nutrients and take what nutrients from the soil. So Mm -hmm. that way, you know, I'm organizing my plants in a way that's going to create, um, like a this beneficial environment system. yeah mm-hmm. a whole system yeah just a nice little wheel um, so i encourage you to keep doing it mm-hmm. do it over if you're in straight lines and you really love those straight lines try to just try to put things um in between them or like if you have to have your straight lines plan another line somewhere else too mm-hmm. you know if once you know one line of your cabbages get attacked well then hopefully we'll just use it as a a trap line and will you your other line will survive and give you a good harvest you know so i do i encourage you to stray away from the lines um and intermix yeah and also the idea though of every other is still like aesthetically pleasing yeah switching it out so i like that idea too yeah definitely Um, and i did want to throw in too just for prevention stuff for indoor house plants I just want to throw into right now, like watch your humidity because that's like how you're going to get spider mites and a couple other things are more encouraged when the humidity is off yeah. of the dryness. And so right now is a good time to just get a humidifier so you don't even have to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. So that'd be a big one. And then just as always, watch your watering. But yeah. Yeah. Humidity for your seed starts a big thing too. 
I, I like the little, honestly, I never really used them last year, but this year I'm using them more so during the germination process are the humidity domes. It's mm. helping a lot because my house is just so darn dry. This helps kind of keep it in. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so like seedling flats. Yeah. Sometimes they come with uh, just like a clear, yeah. the clear dome that goes yeah. over them. Okay. Yeah. That's all it is. Interesting. And it's, it's helping a ton. I still little, want to make that little space. greenhouse over my dining table. <laughs> so once I do cut, Your husband's cut cut clothes, I know I just forgot to now <laughs> slash life is busy, but life is busy. that would be fun. Yeah. Interesting. Is anyone doing any experiments this year? I, don't, I think I told you guys I'm doing a purple garden. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we'll call that an experiment, but it is for me and I'm really excited it about is it. No way. So I have like this, what size? Probably a six by maybe a six by 12 that I, a uh, raised bed that I'm doing is a purple garden. And so I planted all these purple peppers last night. And I'm so excited. Purple peppers, purple, purple. peppers, purple peppers. <laughs> okay. As you know, I went Peter too Piper slow. Picked a yeah. pack of purple peppers. <laughs> no, that is no. Not, no. <laughs> Anywho. Um, but anyways. Good morning from uh, Northern Ontario. Hi, Joe and Sue. Uh, Wicked awesome gardening. I just want to say, first of all, thanks for always being here. Yeah. Um, but also, my sun porch is amazing. I walk out there, and it's sunny and warm. The air is moist. And I'm like, oh, that does sound really nice. And I'm a little jealous. <laughs> I've always a wanted, lot of like, jealous. Yeah, I always wanted that kind of setup. You're doing a goth garden. Oh, my gosh. Everything black? Or is it going to be, like, black and purple? Or black, purple, and blue? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what is a goth garden? Ah, oh, that's going to be so cool. My friend wants me to do an all white garden. I think that will be. I want stunning you to do an all white garden too. <laughs> I think when your first week here, I was like, "Would you do an all white garden?" Yeah. Um, that'd be cool. Just think if you did like the white gray... tomato, the white eggplant, okay. the white pumpkin. Okay. What if someone <laughs> did a line of garden beds and it went right through like the color wheel? Yeah. I like that. What if you could get it to ombre a little bit? You went like white down into like light purple to darker purple. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Can someone do this? Do you guys have the space? Will someone show us a rainbow garden? I, think I that swear, would be. someone here before said that they did have one. So uh, I want to see it. You can email us at contact. At- <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, what's the contact at emmagarden.com? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Oh my gosh. I tried to have spinach and flats in an indoor makeshift greenhouse. It grew, but was kind of pathetic looking. Oh no. Did it have, you had them in flats. Did you have them in cells or was it just a flat tray? I'm wondering about nutrients. If they grew for a while and then got real sad, I'm wondering if they ran out of nutrients. Um, I did. I don't know if you saw this comment, but I was kind of curious about this too. Um, Glenn Davy said, "I found sprinkling a little, a little bit of cinnamon on the leaves of the zucchinis and cucumbers helped disguise the plants and keeps the cucumber beetle and the squash vine for down. Also, less powdery mildew." Okay. Have you ever tried that? I mean, I know cinnamon's used for a lot of mm-hmm. different pest uh, management practices and yes. through many different pests too. So, I haven't personally tried that. But um, I would. Yeah. I'd give it a go. I, people use it in houseplants too a little yeah. bit to prevent like um, fungus gnats and different things. So, and it's cinnamon. Like, why not? It's going to smell good. But that's yeah. interesting about disguising the smell too. <gasps> Laura's doing the rainbow beds. Kirsten. So, oh, we need uh, planting zinnias in a rainbow pattern. I am actually oh. doing a cut flower garden. So, I could organize that way. Creatively Candace. Oh, oh, I love this. I'm a first time gardener in Alaska after moving from the lower 48. That's my experiment. Oh my gosh. You got this, Kiki? <laughs> that's <laughs> my experiment. You'll figure it out. Oh, that's great. I'm so excited. Yeah, this, this is the first year I'm doing um, a, cut, a cut flower garden. Yeah. To join with my brother's starting a CSA this year. So I'm going to add bouquets to it. And I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Well, if I can press any, let me know. Oh, there will be but so many flowers. <laughs> I want to read this one, too. Um, I made a river of marigolds one year completely with a little bridge to walk over the bed. 
That's the cutest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Do you have photos? Send photos. I want to um, see this. I know. I think it'd be really cute. I feel like we got to we gotta come up with like a rainbow hashtag. So you guys can share these with us. Oh, rainbow plants or something. rainbow gardening. Am I gardener? I don't something, know. Something. Something. Work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if... Maybe we should do a giveaway for the person who comes up with the best hashtag. Yeah. Rainbow hashtag. Mm. Yeah. So I'm yeah. think too. It should have like root juice and coffee in there or something like RFC. So, or okay. RSC. I can spell. <laughs> um, so that we can find it too and we'll get mixed with something. Okay. Come prepared next week. We'll do a giveaway. I don't know what yet, but I will find something to give away. Oh. And um, it's going to be for the person who comes up with... I feel like we should have a rainbow hashtag and a root shoots hashtag. Yeah, I kind of just want I'm a hashtag so that I can see the guys. different gardens, like colorful gardens or yeah. whatever cool setup you guys have. Yeah. yeah. So come prepared next week and we will get you guys some prizes. Okay. Am I Rainbow Garden? Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that one's really cute. Okay, yeah. you might win. Come back next week. I will look for oh, you. Oh, they said, oh, crud. <laughs> Root shoots and rainbows? Oh, That's like really cute. Too. Oh, you guys are on this. Okay, but I am. I'm giving you a week to think about Ooh, it. These are both so you good. have to come back next week to get in on the giveaway. Um, yeah, we'll figure out a couple of hashtags for us. Because, I'm, you know, I'm always on my Instagram and everything. And I just, I want to follow along yeah. with you guys and see what you guys are doing, what you're growing. And I think it would be cool if we'll, we add in a few hashtags. Yeah. Yeah, because I want to be able to find your guys' stuff. This, I mean, okay, so I want to read this last one. Okay, 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 okay. Stephanie Raphael says, We try to play our dahlias and zinnias in an ombre. Purple, pink, peach, creamy, yellow. And I'm like, that sounds beautiful. Yeah, I need, I need the pictures. Mm-hmm. So we need to get on this hashtag. Um, um, I have 60-something houseplants, by the way, Randy. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I was caught, I think... What did I end up with? Um, I'm sitting around like 18, which I don't think is bad for like. No, I think it's good because I didn't know if you liked them or not. <laughs> I have I have my monstera from this prize right here. So yeah, she added to my house plant collection, and they're not all like fancy whatever. I have a couple different aloes. I have like mm-hmm. three different snake plants. So I mean that already accounts Love for like plants. six. Yeah. But, yes. All right. Well, everyone, we are so happy you joined us today. I hope you had a good time. Mm-hmm. I want to hear next week. I want to hear how you guys adapted your garden plans to um, include some of the permaculture practice. Oh, and, mm-hmm. you know, how you're going to rearrange. And I want you to tell me that you're going to stray away from the rows um, and kind of experiment this year. Because that's what the gardening season's about, is all these different experiments that you get to learn right. from. Mm-hmm. So come prepared with your hashtags. We'll do a giveaway. And our first, we should have done it today. Oh, if we planned. You know, it's our 10th episode. Oh, yeah. We could have done a giveaway. We'll do it on lucky number 11. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so it was great. Ah, uh, You know what? I, okay, don't leave me. I did see this question earlier, and I it skipped my mind, so I'm sorry, Shelly. Do you guys know what pepper plants you top? Real quick, we got like 30 seconds. Throw in your answers. I don't personally know. Um, I just heard about topping peppers recently in my YouTube binging. Um, I'm I'm not fantastic at growing peppers, so I'm learning this year. But if you guys know, permaculture people power. Uh (laughs) Say that 10 times fast. Um, Yeah, just real quick. If you guys know... And also, remember, after the show is done, mm-hmm. put your any questions we missed, drop them in the comments on the actual video. I can't go back and respond to your the comments live. in your mm-hmm. live chat, but if you put them on the video at the end, Chris and I both like to go back yeah. and answer those. I'd be happy to. You'll see me around. I go on just my personal YouTube, which is Heirloom Acres Homestead. Um, mm-hmm. So if you see that response, it's me. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So we'll be we'll be around, but and drop yeah that info in about topping peppers because I don't know. Yeah, and also to always put in kind of what you guys want to hear more about yeah. or talk about, or you can put in your garden questions even there too. And we'd like to look at like Haley said, like answering them and such. But yeah, 
Um, you could put your hashtags in because I'm excited, but you can save them until next save week them. if you want. Save them. Yeah. You want to win. No, I don't know. We'll figure it out, but we'll do some giveaways. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. But thank you well, again for joining us. And thanks for your patience uh, with the mute issue. This you morning. had to <laughs> remind them. They probably forgot about that embarrassingness. Well, anyways, thank you. <laughs> no. All right. All right.